Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this is a nice crowd, and we welcome also all of you watching this broadcast at home. Thank you. I think it is a very good idea when anyone arrives with a baby. It always, yeah. it always increases attendance. So thank you, Lennon. <laughs> if you keep coming on Sunday morning, Lennon, we will have to add on to the sanctuary. So we appreciate oh, that. Geez. Well, I am glad that all of us have survived yet another week of snow. And I am thankful that we could make it into the parking lot this morning. You may see my idea for opening a small ski resort here in the near future. But hopefully we are past the worst of winter. I say that every year at this time in February and I'm always wrong, so don't go by me. But today we gather on this, the first Sunday of Lent. And the first Sunday of Lent is very, very important because we go back to the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And sometimes when we go back to the beginning, we forget how significant these events are. And in the Gospel of Mark, they're given in very fast, very immediate fashion, because the writer of the Gospel of Mark knew that the mission of Jesus Christ in the world was an urgent mission. And that mission today continues to be urgent. And as I do each week, I have opened our 1852 Bible to today's text. So you can rest assured that in 1852, as the people of Salem Methodist Episcopal Church gathered, they were reading from that very scripture, the same scripture that Penny will read today. And so as we would have been able to say in 1852, and as we can say in 2021, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I do have uh, two announcements. First of all, immediately following the service, our church council will meet. And again, these are open meetings. Uh, we'll meet immediately after the service and all are invited to attend. In addition, uh, two things. Please take a moment and prayerfully consider signing up as a liturgist. The sign-up sheet is on the table in the rear of the church. And also, our sanctuary candle. This is a very important part of who we are as the people of God. And when we light this candle in memory of someone, in memory of an event, it is very significant because it causes us to remember that we are not only the Church of Jesus Christ today, but that we are here celebrating all who have been the Church of Jesus Christ before us. So please, if you have a special memory, <coughs> memory of someone in particular, memory of a time in your life, please take a moment and, and sign up for the Sanctuary Candle. I think it's a very beautiful part of what we do at Salem, and I, <clears throat> and I hope we can, we can really start to reflect on that each and every Sunday. Any other announcements this morning? There being none, let us be about the reason we have gathered on this beautiful day as we join in our call to worship. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship, which can be found on your bulletin. We often feel that we are in the wilderness. We are tempted to lose hope. We feel that our lives are broken. We are tempted to lose faith. We feel the presence of our living God. We fall to our knees. We rejoice that Jesus Christ is Lord. Please join us in our opening hymn, a very appropriate hymn for today's message, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
for that position You're later fired. on in the week. Yeah. <laughs> you get fired from here? I didn't know that. No one ever yeah, gets fired. Get fired. That's right. I keep trying. Only certain people. That's right. Well, on that happy note, again, we welcome all of you today. And I always think it is such a great joy. And again, I mentioned baby Lennon um, when, when we arrived. It's always such a great joy to have a baby with us, isn't it? What a sign of life. You know, sometimes during the week, I become very discouraged and disheartened. I really do. Your pastor probably should not say that, but I do. I'm a human being, you know, and I'm dealing with snow, and I'm dealing with this, and I'm dealing with that, and all of these other things we pastors deal with, and this was a week of pastor yes. meetings. We had pastor meetings, and yesterday I had my annual interview to decide if I can continue as a pastor. Um, we'll see. But the reality is it's been a very, very trying week for me. And yet, when we get together and I look at a little baby, and yes, Cheryl, you will have to give baby Lennon back at the end of the service. When I look at a little baby, my hope and my joy is renewed. And that is the great beauty of life, is it not? And sometimes we just have to stop and look at the joy we see in a young child, that the joy we see in parents and, and grandparents and great-grandparents, that's the joy of life. And that's how we experience God, and that's my joy today. So thank you, baby Lennon, for cheering me up. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Other joys this morning. Yes. It was, it was nice to hear Adam's voice during the hymn. I heard it back here and it just uh, filled me with joy. Well, very nice. Wow. I paid him to say that. <laughs> my, that was my first assumption. <laughs> no, thank you. That's very nice, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, my youngest son and his wife will be celebrating 25 years of wedded. I'm not sure bliss, but they're wedded. <laughs> oh, and, and that is. Chris. Chris, okay. Wow, that's that's an accomplishment. <laughs> yes, it is an accomplishment, yes. I have a friend to get twenty five years of marriage, he'd have to count all three wives. So it's very good. It's very good if you can do that with just one spouse. That's excellent. That's excellent. All right. Also we have birthdays to celebrate. That's always a great joy. Um, our sister in Christ, Doris Bell, 
has a birthday today, so we want to remember Doris, keep her in our prayers, just a wonderful, wonderful life of Christian witness and service. And it seems to me Laura will have a birthday coming up this week. <laughs> Did you remember that, that you have a birthday come on the 25th? They have reminded me. I have not only been sent one Medicare card, I have been sent three. <laughs> so oh, I wow. think they're trying to tell me something. I think they're trying to give you a, uh, I think they're trying to give you a message, but also Laura. And I know a week from tomorrow is Kim's birthday. Yes. <laughs> You did know it was your birthday a week from I don't, tomorrow. I don't have birthdays anymore. Oh, okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay. okay, forget I said it was Kim's birthday on the 28th. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Remember you. that. Uh, so also, though, this morning, uh, we want to lift up some special burdens. You know, last week I, at, at our Ash Wednesday service, I asked for prayers from a woman named Karen who was at University of Chicago Hospital for a double lung transplant. Uh, she passed peacefully into eternal life. And we want to pray for her family, and we want to pray for peace in that family. Um, very, very difficult situation, but we know in difficult situations the hand of God is mightily present. Also, we want to celebrate that, uh, as I mentioned again on Wednesday, our good friend and sister in Christ, Vicki, is now home and uh, seems to be doing very, very well. Other burdens this morning we want to lift? Yes? Um, I'd like us to keep Mike and Anita Woodland in our prayers. Okay. Um, Mike has been in remission from bone cancer, and it appears that his symptoms are returning. Okay. Um, so he has an MRI and a doctor's appointment scheduled in this next week. Okay. We will pray for him. Yes, Peggy? Yeah, Lloyd starts treatments again for his lymphoma on the 24th. Okay. Because the tumor's grown. We will, we will pray for him. Yes, John. Well, prayers for my Aunt Rose. She's going in for some surgery on her bone. Okay. We'll pray for Aunt Rose. Certainly. Yes, Ed. Ed. Uh, uh, my daughter Cheryl worked with a, uh, a girl named Tammy Gregg, mm -hmm. and uh, she's in Lafayette, and she's really having a tough time with COVID and all the complications that uh, go along. Okay. With. We will pray for Tammy. Thank you. Yes, Ed. I think we should pray for the rest of our members that are not here, you know, either from illness or from fear of the pandemic. Okay, very good. Like the Wallaces, you know, uh, Tommy, Grandma and Grandpa, sure. and then uh, uh, Peggy's husband, Lloyd, like, sure. you know, and all the rest that are not able to come anymore. That's an excellent point, Adam. We will do that. Thank we you. Do them all. Thank you. All right, let us gather all of these prayers and even those prayers now that we hold deep within our hearts that we may not want to give physical voice to, but we know God hears those prayers. Living God of truth and of life, we gather today as your people. We come together as a people of great joy as we celebrate the birthdays of our our sisters in Christ who will celebrate this week, Doris, Laura, Kim. We thank you for the witness of their lives, the strength of their faith, and the way in which they navigate this world that can often be very difficult, but navigate it with your hope. We thank you for the gift of new life, as we see in, in baby Lennon. For in new life, we recall that you give us each abundant life. You give us hope beyond circumstance. Uh, we want to pray in thanksgiving as well for, for Chris and his, his wife on their 25th wedding anniversary. May it continue to sustain them, guide them. May they be bathed in your peace, and may they know the hope of your love and your peace. We pray for Mike and Anita, especially Mike as he prepares for more testing. We pray that your healing presence may surround and may comfort him and guide him. We pray for Lloyd. As he begins another round of treatments, may he know your peace and may he know the strength that comes from you and only from you. And may Lloyd and Peggy be filled with hope. And may they know that they are never abandoned or never separated from your love. Uh, we pray for Tammy as she walks through this journey of COVID. May she be comforted, strengthened, and may she know that her strength is found in you and her hope can be found in all gathered in prayer for her and all gathered around and surrounding her. And, and being with her, we pray for 
Aunt Rose, um, as she as she prepares to undergo surgery, we just pray you'll keep her safe and guide her and grant wisdom to her caregivers. We pray for the family of Karen who passed into eternal peace this week. We just pray that they may be comforted for her life was a witness to standing strong in the face of struggle and a testament to the power of your love expressed in those who gathered around her in prayer and thought, even though they could not be with her physically. We pray in thanksgiving that our brother, our sister in Christ, Vicki, is home and doing well. We pray you continue to sustain and strengthen her. We say a very special prayer today for those members of our Salem family who cannot be with us due to the pandemic or due to illness. We pray that they may know that they are connected with us in a real and a true way through your love and may your peace, your guidance, your strength, and your comfort and compassion surround them, cover them, and grant them hope. And may they know that they will always be your beloved children. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession, which can be found on your bulletin. <coughs> Holy God, throughout human history, you have reached into the wilderness of life to speak words of truth of challenge and of redeeming love. Yet, when we feel the loneliness, the fear, and the guilt of our own wilderness, our hearts are hardened, and we turn from your grace. In your mercy, forgive us for allowing the language of death and despair to capture our thoughts and guide our actions. Through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Open our hearts to your will, our hands to your work, and send us forth to testify to the good news. In Jesus' name, amen. We now enter into a time of silent prayer and meditation. And that's an important time in our service, although through most of the service we are very vocal. We sing hymns, we offer prayers, we talk with one another, we read scripture, but during this time we are called to listen in a very particular way. Because think during the week of all the things we listen to. We listen to the news, we can do that constantly if we like. We listen to the problems of the world, we listen to the problems of our own life, we listen to the problems in our family, and we can become discouraged. But this is a time when we listen to God. Now in today's scripture, we talk of the baptism of Jesus. And in that baptism, we know scripture says the heavens open. And God's voice said, you are my beloved. And so as we gather today in this time of silence, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to hear that voice from God. Because God is saying to you, not in the same way, Jesus, but in the way of a person called into fellowship with God. God is saying to you, you are my beloved. In you, I take delight. Close your eyes and think about that and put your own name in that sentence. And that's exactly how God feels about you right now, today.
Amen. Amen. And during these times, and we all face difficult times in life, we face difficult times in our work, we face difficult times in our families, even in our churches. But just stop and remember that each day, that God really does say to you, you are my beloved, and you I take your life. It's a very true statement, and one that must ring true if you really want to be Christians. We now engage in pastoral prayer as we join with Christian churches throughout the world. <laughs> And we pray to remind ourselves of the great mission that we have as the body of Christ. It is called embodiment. Now that may be something you've never heard in church, but that's really what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to embody the truth of Christ, embody the love of Christ, the compassion of Christ. We embody that as the body of Christ. That is why in our tradition, and something I have so sorely missed during this pandemic, is we do laying on of hands. We do, we like to hug people, do we not? We are an embodied faith. That's why we anoint, we anoint by touching the forehead with the oil in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what embodiment means. It means that we are to be the people of God. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with a place called Harmony, Indiana. Has anyone been to Harmony mm -hmm. on the Wabash? Well, what you may not know is Harmony, Indiana was started to be the perfect human community back in 1825. And it was started by a man who had this wonderful dream. His dream was, what if we could get a group of people to come together, treat each other with ultimate respect, we would have the perfect community of human beings. And they did some amazing things in Harmony. They had first public education for men and women. Totally equal education for men and women. Precedent setting at that time. They had the very first, they had the very first free public library. And those of you who are Ben Franklin fans do not object, that library was not free. Ben started. All deference to Ben. But Harmony, Indiana was, a, was it envisioned to be a dream community. It lasted two years. It collapsed. It collapsed because the experiment relied on people being able to work together. And they were not. Even in what should have been an ideal setting, personal ambition, personal jealousy, greed, pride, competition got in the way. Two years after it started, it collapsed with a lot of angry, bitter, and hurting people. And sometimes I think we need to look at the lesson of harmony as we look at how to be the body of Christ in the world. Because quite frankly, we see so often the world we construct with our human hands, no matter how perfect we think it is, always seems to be assailed by greed, by pride, by false ambition, by jealousy. But we are called to build a different world. And that's what we do as the Church of Jesus Christ. We are called to build that world here and now. And that is the mission of the Church. And as we lift up our prayers today, let us lift up those prayers that we can be the vision of a world of peace and harmony and understanding. That we can be the vision of a people loving one another with compassion and justice and hope. So oh, please respond, hear our prayer. <laughs> Holy and living God, we pray that the church of your Son, our Lord and Savior, may always express and live your love, your compassion, your hope, and your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for Salem United Methodist Church in our 177th year of gospel witness. May we continue to proclaim that your kingdom will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us not look to build our own kingdom but to build your kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayers for our nation. Lead us to rise above partisan differences. Lead us to rise out of from hatred and injustice, and lead us only to seek truth, hope, and equity for all peoples, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers for all who suffer particularly those who suffer the ravages of COVID, and we remember particularly Tammy, for whom we prayed earlier today. May your love comfort them, sustain them, guide them, and comfort them, and may they know they are never separated from your providential care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for all who grieve, and we think today especially of Karen's family, May they be comforted by the legacy of life lived well against the struggles of the world, and may they find hope in the Easter promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now for those prayers residing only in the hearts and minds of all gathered here today. We lifted up so many names today, names of our brothers and sisters, our friends, who are undergoing real and deep challenges. We have people going for treatments this week for the first time. We have people going for medical tests. We have people undergoing surgery. We have people who cannot be with us today because of COVID. And as we said during Joys and Concerns, let's hold those people in our hearts right now in a special way. We know their names. Let's hold them in our hearts in a special way. And where there is fear or anxiety about something coming this week, let's pray that there will be hope and peace. And where there is doubt about a decision to be made, may there be wisdom. And where there is grief over loss, may there be comfort. And where there is struggle, may there be the community of God's people gathered together to support and walk with each of them. Lord, hear these prayers from our heart in your mercy. Please respond. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We now gather those together. And I, I do like to do that. I think when we talk about prayers in our hearts and minds, what I want us to do, and I'm going to do this from this week forward, you know, we lift up so many names and we pray for them as people of God and community. What I want you to do is keep those people in your heart when we lift up hearts and minds. And then each day during the week, when you think of those folks, think of someone special, keep them in your heart and just say a prayer for God's peace in their life. And you'll feel an amazing sense of peace and an amazing sense of connection. But when we take all of those prayers that we gather together, put them in, in this great collection of needs, concerns, wants, joys, burdens, we transform them into the perfect prayer. The prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us. So as the people of Salem United Methodist Church gather together each week, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the epistle reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. This morning's gospel is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom has come. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <laughs> It has been quite a week, in fact, quite a month in our lives, has it not? We are watching it snow virtually every day, <laughs> temperatures sub-zero, shoveling snow more than anybody wants to in their entire life. But yet, somehow, we've made it through. In fact, this week, our middle son sent us a picture. He lives in Florida. Sent us a picture of uh, standing on the beach with our granddaughter, both wearing shorts and the bright sun shining. I text back and said, I'd like to write more, but I'm busy changing my will, taking you out of it <laughs> at the moment. But isn't it interesting how our friends who are in Florida love to send us pictures all the time when we have 22 inches of snow? You know, it's almost like we don't hear from them the rest of the year. But all it's got to do is start snowing up here, and suddenly here we are under the palm tree. But it's interesting in today's gospel that, that Penny read so well, it almost seems like an abbreviated version of the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, does it not? Now, do you remember when we were in high school, they had these wonderful things called cliff notes. Remember those? They were yellow and black books. And for those of us who didn't necessarily like doing homework, myself included, they would be our salvation. And you could pick this out and you could see what the teacher wanted you to know. And then you could write your paper or answer the test. Now, the only problem was my English teacher, who did not like me, hopefully she's not listening, my English teacher, who did not like me, all of a sudden wondered, because she knew probably the last book I had read from start to finish involved people named Dick and Jane and a dog. <laughs> so she probably wondered how I started writing like I just graduated with a degree in English from Harvard. But nonetheless, I used to think, wouldn't it be nice if we had cliff notes for life? Wouldn't it be nice if we could walk into a bookstore and find a nice little book that said, how to live for dummies. But it doesn't exist, does it? It does not exist because life is full of human circumstances. And the question is, not can we find an easy way out, but can we find a way to experience God in those circumstances? Now, when I was growing up, my parents had an annual tradition especially when I was in elementary school, they would make certain we went on vacation every year. Now, my family did not have a lot of money, but they would, they would put together the money they had and we would go on a vacation. Now, my dad never wanted to do two things. One, make any kind of a reservation at a motel. <laughs> would never make a reservation at a motel. He would drive around looking for a spot that he thought was interesting. And so we stayed in some very interesting motels, okay? We were lucky if the motel room had a door on it. Those are the kind of motels we would stay in. And I can remember staying in motels where they would have these cabins. He particularly loved these motels where they had cabins set outside and you would have your own little cabin, you know? And he would say, 
boy, you know, we're gonna, I can remember him saying, I bet we're going to meet some interesting people staying in a place like this. I said, yeah, probably most of them on the run from the law, Dad. <laughs> but many years later, I can remember driving by. In fact, if you drive into Michigan City on Route 421, there's an old motel that has cabins. Remember it well. And uh, every time I drive by there, I would get this touch of nostalgia. And during the last year of my dad's life, I always ask him why he wanted to stay at those kind of places. And it really had nothing to do with cost because at that point, you really didn't have a lot of Holiday Inns or Hampton Inns or all of those things. And he said, it's because I wanted you to experience mom and me in a different environment than home. I wanted you to experience us in a different environment not in some standard motel room, but in a different place. And he said, that's why we went on vacation. Now, of course, when I got older and got into high school, we stopped going on vacation because I firmly believe they did not want to be locked up in a car with me alone for that long. But that was something that really made me think. And it made me think about what we're talking about during Lent, and that is prayer. You know, we often talk about what is prayer prayer. And I talk about, can we find a guide to live in life? And many times we think about, well, maybe prayer is that guide. Maybe prayer is that guide. And I suggest that the reason prayer does not become a guide in someone's life is because we have forgotten what prayer really, really means. Now, on Wednesday night at our Ash Wednesday service, we talked about the first pillar of prayer, and that is desire. We have a desire in our heart that is God's grace to communicate with God and to deepen our relationship with God. That's desire. And today I want to talk about the second pillar of prayer. And it relates exactly to what we heard in the gospel today. The second pillar of prayer is purpose. Why do we pray? Oh, and we can say we pray to change the events of our life. We pray to change circumstances. But what happened immediately after Jesus was baptized today? The Spirit drove, and that's the translation of the word, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Drove him into the wilderness. God has just said, you are my beloved. And then he's out in the wilderness. And I know the other synoptic gospels, Matthew and Luke, go into great detail about the testing of Jesus, and the things that Satan says to him. But the reality of it is that scripture verse should demonstrate to us that the purpose of prayer is to experience God in response to the circumstances of life. That is the purpose of prayer. God has placed a desire in your heart to have a relationship with God. And in prayer, the purpose we are pursuing is to experience God in the circumstances we encounter in life. No different than my dad saying he wanted me to experience my mother and father in circumstances outside of our home, outside of that safe environment, in a whole different environment, away from the, the world as we would know it. And in prayer, that's what we do. Think about that. Whenever we pray, if the purpose of that prayer is to experience God in response to our circumstance, we are open to God's love. We are open to God's wisdom. And we are open to God's mission. Sometimes we make prayer so personal in fact, I read an article this week in preparing the sermon. They said one of the issues with Lent in 2021 is we try to find ways to make it all about us. We try to find ways to make Lent about us. Lent is not about us. Lent is about experiencing God in the circumstances of life in ways that are deep and meaningful and purposeful. And so think about that today. Whenever we gather as a people, we talk about our burdens, do we not? We talk about the things that are happening in our life. 
I today was talking about, in joys and concerns, talking about what a bad week I had and how tired I was of meetings and how tired I was of having to say the same thing over and over and over again. And yes, there are times I tire of talking, believe it or not. And yet, it dawned on me, how was I experiencing God in that week? And I prayed about that. But I prayed with the purpose to help me experience God in that week. And I came to realize the depth of a relationship I had with another pastor I had never realized before. I never realized that how much this individual, how much he meant to me in my pastorate. I did that because I could experience God in my circumstance of working with him. And I could experience God in my circumstance of dealing with someone who is very, very ill this week. Dealing with someone who is facing a loss. And I could experience God, and that became the purpose of my prayer. And yes, we can lift up petitions to God. We can lift up requests to God. God wants to be in conversation with us. But it has to begin with our purpose being to experience God, not for God to experience us. So as we close today, I'm gonna to ask you to close your eyes as I do virtually every Sunday. Close your eyes and think about this thought. This week you will experience many different things in life. You are going to have disappointments. You're gonna have bad news. You're gonna have joyful news. You're going to have families coming together and you're gonna have families breaking apart. What if your prayer this week is, Holy God, let me experience you in these circumstances. Let me experience you in loss. Let me experience you in joy. Let me experience you in challenge. And let me experience you when all seems desperate. So this week, as we reflect on the message today, let us pray with the purpose of experiencing God. And then we will see that God's kingdom can indeed be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 <clears throat>